received a motion to accept the election officials for the upcoming primary election to be held on May the 11th, 2010, as presented. However, it's just the Democrats that I have received. I have not received the Republicans. Have you received them from all the priests that they have the Lord and stuff? For, for the Democrats, we have, but not the Republicans. I'll, I'll motion. Second. Motion second. And the motion is presented Democrats only. All yes. Motion carried. Is there a deadline, Judy, for the... Yes, I did send out letters requesting those back in by March the 2nd. And if they don't, now what happens? Well, we'll still beg them to give us some workers because... You still got to have the poll work. Yeah. Cynthia? <laughs> State workers are allowed to work. Oh, yes, they are. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things. We, we were up for some time election day trying to fill, you know, some slots. I mean, it yeah. has to be done, but... With these machines, you need everybody knowing what's going on. You know, just you just take that way, and not have some have somebody there not know what's going on. Well, this way too, I think the intent is to make sure that the Democratic Executive Committee, the Republican Executive Committee, has the opportunity to fill these positions. Because sometimes they have people who really want to work, they just have to be contacted. So if, if we do not receive names from the Republican Executive Committee won't be the steps that we take. Be up to Mr. Whitten's office to start replacing them in there with Republicans. He could call people and he could just fill them in as his discretion. And somebody may step up the plate once it's a little closer to the election and start calling what to be in there. We have already received several names and I was needing a couple for there and shared and then we have looked at the ones that had turned in. There were several Republicans that we might can use those. Do we have a list of who attended the trainings last time so, mm -hmm. so we could contact them if they want to know? There is one thing we uh, not mentioned about these machines. They are uh, uh, sensitive uh, machines. I think they uh, are productive machines. But we are, again, going to uh, train and have people out in the field uh, being uh, rovers, monitors, uh, making sure these machines stay uh, calibrated and working properly. So uh, if uh, there's people in the public that would like to be involved in being a rover in the precinct, making sure these machines work, again, contact Mr. Whitten's office and uh, we will try to get use those people because we want people that want this process to work. When I went to that election training last week, I talked to the company that was there with the SNS about how Lincoln County had a bad name of not being calibrated and and they said that women's nails can you can go in and you're thinking you're hitting it here and it will go to the next one. That if you don't hit it just exactly then it will jump around. And they had these little um, stipulas is what they call it and it's like a little ball that has a rubber end. And I was going to ask the commission at a later date if we could have permission to order one of those for each machine. And I think that would be something that would help us. Well, didn't the last time they recommended we use pencil erasers? They did, but they come out with these new little things here. Yeah, something else that's been brought to my attention is the fact that when someone votes out of their precinct, that even if the vote is challenged, that eventually that vote does not count. And it would be great if we could somehow have a master list of the voters. We have been sending a master list to okay. every precinct. But that is true, is it not? The way the canvas is, if you vote out of precinct, you unless you're a poll worker. And, you know, and, you're and we received a, a letter also came down, Donald's office did, that they are encouraging all poll workers to either vote. Early. early vote, if you're not working in your own precinct, that you need to do your early voting because to cut down your challenge ballots. Yep. Okay. I need a motion to approve the internal budget revision request for the Office of the Assessors requested by Tracy Dempsey. Assessors follows transfer $200 from travel to record books. So moved. Second. Motion second. All yes. Motion carries. We need a motion to approve the employment of Vanna Hensley at $10 per hour and Elizabeth Sprouse at $8 per, per hour as an assistant at the Hearts Daycare, effective March the 8th. But I think Vanna's going to start tomorrow, yes. which would be effective March the 5th. And these are just temporary, both of them really, uh, uh, the 
regular people out there are going to have to take training one day a week for 10 weeks on Mondays. So we've got to have somebody to fill in. So it's why we have this. And I did talk Do they have a budget to pay these people out of their budget? Or how, how do they do that? Yeah, well, uh, they, we've got two sources of money. One is we have a grant uh, out there for 15000 mm -hmm. and uh, And then also LINK uh, pays money uh, in regards to people who are eligible for LINK. And then, of course, those that aren't are cash paying customers. So we do have money there. We had to put it up, but then we do get reimbursed. When we do our like, yearly evaluation of these places that we have? Um, the uh, Hearts uh, Center, uh, we've already applied for a grant for next year. They decided that in May at the Southwestern, so we've asked them for money again for next year. Uh, but uh, other than that, it was, uh, they give us 25,000. 25,000. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, it's 25,000. <laughs> They uh, seems like if the heart center is growing, uh, I don't know if we ever sit down doing an evaluation other than trying to watch and see if it's making any money or breaking even. And but it is up to like what, twelve kids or something. Like yes, that. we've got a nineteen hundred dollar link check coming at any time, and I just received five hundred and some dollars for last month for child care. But I, it's just one of those things that. Uh, some juncture, I don't know what we'll do, we'll sit down at some point and look and see how much money we got come in, how much we set out, and see where we're at, because we have to look at that. Did you say 2300 for one month? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so make a Not yet. Motion. Second. Motion, second. All yes. Motion carries. Okay, next thing on the agenda is we need a motion for uh, to approve the relocation of precinct number 10, which is the Woodville precinct from the barber shop in Woodville to across the street at the Mooresville BFD building. So moved. Uh, is there a reason we're doing this? Or is lost the building? Or well, there's more space in uh, Woodville. And the other building has changed hands to a different right. business. Awesome. In motion and second. All yes. Motion carries. I need a motion to adopt a resolution adopting the updated Lincoln County multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan. Second. Motion second. All yes. Motion carried. Next thing on the agenda, public comments. Jack Browning, what are you doing? Don't fall asleep. <laughs> uh, I'd like to be included in this coming year's budget again, like we always have. I'll give everybody a letter. We like to be put in there because, you know, we've already bought our fireworks, so we need money to pay for them. We've already paid for them. But, uh, then the county fair, we'd like to ask money for it, too. Is this exactly what you asked for last year? Yeah. Well, well, I think there's another 10,000. We'll uh, the county fair, is this a one-time deal, or is this more than, how many days you do that? It's three to four days. We do have a music program coming. Well, it's about that. And we're working on one for July 4th. <coughs> but we're waiting on the water line. <laughs> hey, he's got, the, he's got the spigots in his pocket. Well, uh, ours is dry. It's a when? Soon. 